My name is Art Jeanette. I'm 60 years old. I'm a food icon of North Florida. I own a southern restaurant that specializes in cracker cuisine, uh, barbecue, and just about anything you would really like me to cook. I can cook anything, and we, and we go from A to Z, from something inexpensive to something very expensive, and uh, something designed for your special occasion, from weddings to uh, corporate catering to festivities in the park, but we do it all. You don't know what cracker cooking is, boy? Well, let me tell you what cracker cooking is. Cracker cooking is, let's say, North Florida, Southern Georgia, Alabama, those areas. Um, it, it was created at the same time as soul cooking, cracker cooking. They all became just good down-home cooking. Everybody at the turn of the century uh, when these um, names came about, cooked off of a farm. So it was all fresh. And the Southerners were basically the new world by the train coming to North Florida. And that's what they referred to us as, as the new world cooking. We actually had uh, cooking classes and farmhouses, people's homes. We would have the di different nationalities, uh, have uh, cooking classes in the homes and stuff to put together what they learned from the new world all the way to having the American Indian, the African ladies of course, to the Irish had a lot, the Spanish we had it all right here in, in North Florida and it's where the um, cracker cooking is really where the American dinner as we know it today began. That's what cracker cooking is. How about that? from the farm to the table, and so much in my case from the river to the table. It was all fresh, um, done with entertaining. We would entertain the Yankees coming down to sell them products and uh, just have soirees of cracker cooking for these people. And they loved it, and still do love it. Now you said from the river, so what is that about? Well, that's, we get, Oh my goodness, the St. John's River, uh, Georgia, we got the St. Mary's River. St. Mary's River is great for the catfish, that's where you get your catfish. But St. John's will run a bunch of river shrimp. And our shrimp have a good sweet taste. You'll get your trout, your red bass, red... We, we've got an a enormous amount of seafood coming uh, from our rivers. And it's fresh daily. Uh, uh, there's no comparison. What do you mean compare? We're, we're, still working, we're still working off the farm from the freshness. Now what has come up in, let's say, even more of the new world cooking is that we don't use so much animal fat that we'll use vegetable oil. And I like to use a lot of soy oil in my... Uh, well, like you would use uh, fat back in your collard greens. Well, you might not want to do so much fat back anymore as much as get the meat flavor in there and put a little soy oil in there instead of an animal fat. So it's becoming more of a heart-healthy menu than um, a greasy menu. Well, this is, this is the joke in it. Um, we, we owned a fish camp right down the street from probably the most artistic hotel on the ocean. And what the fun of that is, is uh, my family. We had a fish. 
Yeah, my, I'm sorry, my family owned a fish camp uh, basically right down the street from one of your most popular hotels that uh, they're extremely good in their artistry on their plates. Well, my joke is if, if there's so much design in the plate, there's not much food and it means the rent is too high. So we pile up the plates and it's gorgeous and it's full and you will get a full meal instead of a drizzle and a dab. How about that? And let me, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you something else about the Southern cooking. As we do fry a great deal and everybody goes, oh my God, it's fried, oh my God, it's fried. Well, when it's fried, the waters are really pushing outward and the oil is not coming in and once again, I even use a soy oil on that, and it's, it's the lightest colored oil. When you eat my shrimp, uh, the batter is so thin, you still see the shrimp, and you never taste the oil. That's what's so good about the Southern cooking nowadays. Um. Well, yeah, yeah, because your body does need the oils and the fresh vegetables. Um, you, you got all, you know, God gave you all these meats and vegetables and everything to eat in seasons. And that's the reason right now everybody, while it's cold in Florida, we have all the citrus. Uh, and we um, don't do real heavy, heavy meats. Uh, so much, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really like spaced out. You don't eat heavy every day. And, and you do plan it out to a smaller amount of the meats, but your body needs it. What defines me as a chef? What defines me most as a chef is that I'm in control of the uh, quality of the product in my restaurant every minute of the day. And so what is, I mean, meaning, meaning what? Meaning what? Personality, food quality, all... I, w I, would, I would say what, what defines me most of a chef is, um, is my personality in the kitchen and the dining room. That people and my staff know that um, they're going to be taken care of with good quality fresh products. And what, what is your personality in the kitchen? Are you... Um, my personality in the kitchen is, is pretty... Um, Robust, would you say? That, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm, I like to cook a lot of exhibition, and when I'm coming out with a shrimp, I'm screaming, hot shrimp, hot shrimp! Uh, you know, get your fresh collard greens. I tell the customers, when you're eating those collard greens, especially the women getting fresh collard greens, it returns, I let them know the nutrition fact, it returns the, um, iron back to their body all in the same day. I tell them after they eat my collard greens, they can keep their man pretty straight. And then we got the fattening things also, the uh, potatoes with scallops in it, and that might hit their hips a little bit, but it's worth the time. And, oh, wait a minute, and, and, and when, I'm, when I'm screaming out about my uh, collard greens and everything, I have to tell them about my crab cakes. My crab cakes, there's a, there's a flavor in them you may not recognize. It's real crab meat, spelled with a C. Uh, we use no artificial products. We use, um, you know, no MSG. We don't add things to our food to enhance the flavor. It's all the natural flavors. Um, one thing I really hate as a chef is uh, all these wood byproducts they have mixed in things. I will not buy a frozen french fry 
You would have to kill me before, I, no, you wouldn't have to kill me. But I would not buy a frozen french fry because it's like a mush potato and a wood byproduct added together. And that's what uh, our industry is serving the, our guests every day because it cuts the cost down. And that's what makes me so different from all the rest. When they come into my restaurant, they get the hand-cut french fries, potatoes, they're real potatoes, they're fried in a zero trans fat oil. Uh, everything is fresh. And that separates me from, I believe, 99 and 9 tenths. You'll have your private clubs doing the, like, the real fancy drizzle plates, but they're using chemicals. They're using products that have been made for them. They're not cooking down their essence of something. They're getting it out of a bottle and they're drizzling it on the plate and making it look pretty. You don't see that with me. Mine will look pretty, but it's out of products that I prepare myself. Absolutely. <laughs> there's no question about that. I said, there's no question about that. <laughs> There you go. I'm pretty enough to go around with my iron skillet and serve everybody uh, fresh shrimp. And, and the cool thing about doing so much exhibition and being out there with the guests is I have to look at my guests right in their eyes on what they're eating and what I'm serving them. I'm not hiding back in the kitchen and, and putting mystery products or canned products out. Everybody gets to see their product prepared fresh right in front of them. That can separate me from most of them. Yeah, I'm sorry, say again. I said that can separate me from most of the chefs. I'm out there out front with my guests and looking at them in the face while I'm serving them fresh products. Well, the chemicals is enough. I mean, you can't go out to eat and somebody prepare a nice prime rib roast and then they've made the au jus out of a bottle mix. That gets me badly. But I guess um, poor service and uh, alcohol becoming the front runner of a food house instead of the other way around. You should be, you know, everybody's trying to sell alcohol to... Um, you know, uh, undermine their food. And then they just eventually forget about their food and just try to do alcohol, alcohol. So I don't like alcohol for running a food house. Okay, the, the best I, if they threw me a curveball and gave me, um, you know, frozen products, there's a way that you can, you can handle that by heating up your pan and just a little bit of water and steaming it up and kind of like, you know, flashing it in there and covering it for just a little bit and toss it around. You would not want to boil it to where it all broke down and stuff. But whatever they gave me, I would do the best I can with what I have. And that's what we've done in the South all of our life is done the best we can with what we have, especially in the old fish camp we had. But um, you can make good products out of what is there. And you just you know, try to keep them nutritious. Um, and then what, about, what about the time pressure on the show? How do you think you handle the time pressure? I go through time pressure every day. Opening up on time, delivering on time, setting up on time. I have two, and one, like um, the catering I do right now, I have to be set up at 11 o'clock and 11.30. You always go through those pressures in this business. It's, um, you know, timing to have the plate out to the people's uh, table in time or have the buffet set up in time or, or that it doesn't lose its heat in a certain amount of time. So everything in this business is a pressuring time schedule, especially in the catering of loading up and then setting up and being able to serve right on time. Because you can't, you can't survive without uh, being on a time schedule in this business anyway. Um, and now, um, what do you think, um, how, does your, how does your personality show when you're cooking? I mean, are you, when things are really busy. 
Ah, ah, how does my personality show? I'm generally screaming what I'm doing, especially on the Friday and Saturday night when we have the authentic North Florida cracker style buffet and we serve smoked ribs. As I'm putting the product out into the old fashioned cast iron skillets, I'm screaming, hot fried green tomatoes, hot shrimp, hot fish with cornmeal batter. It's a hoot. So uh, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, if I catch, and it's easy to catch people that, um, you know, I'm, I'm aware of not just one of my tables, but all of my guests. And so many times you'll get people from out of town, and you can catch that. And pretty soon you have them all involved in the event. And that's what it is on Friday and Saturday night. It's an event. And you pull everybody together and let them know about what they're eating, where they're eating it, where it came from. People will come in, perfect strangers. Let's say we have 50 people that night. They will be perfect strangers when they first come in. And by the way, I go around and talk to everybody and the congenial attitude that there's not one person better to another. Um, it's everybody loosens up and at the end of the night, it's like everybody are best friends. So they can come in as strangers in the beginning, but they leave all talking to one another. I don't have guests coming in behind them. It's a sitting. It's not something where, you know, people come up, they go, well, I want a table after them. That's not going to happen. What we have is families sitting around talking to one another and talking to the group next to them and so on and so on. And they might even share their wine with the table next to them if they really like them. And wait a minute, wait a minute, one more thing. And I, and I go around, when I go around with the blackened shrimp and serve it out of the iron skillet and talk to everybody, that, that makes it more of a congenial attitude in the evening also. And then we walk around with homemade cookies. Who wouldn't love one another after homemade cookies? Absolutely. I would treat them. I would treat them as my guest, and and show them some good Southern hospitality from North Florida. Give them some of that. What the food, North Florida food icon is all about, and the entertaining cracker, and entertaining with your food. That's what people want today. They don't want just you to throw a plate down in front of them and. You know, the person give them their ticket of how much money they owe. People do want to be entertained with their food, and that's what they get when they come and eat with me. So do I. Absolutely, they have to get involved too. They have to know what, who, they're, who they're judging with. And Guy, you know, he thinks he's going to trump the stage. He may not. He may, he may have a little bit of competition. My hair is already white. Well, when, when, I, when I get on the show, um, you might hear me hollering down every aisle to find something until I find it. You know, I might scream, where's the salt? Where's the salt? Where's the flour? I need some, I need some banana pudding, something. <laughs> I might ask the judges, where is it? I know you know where it is. <laughs> you know, get their hand in it. But uh, I, would, I would make it fun for myself, and then it would be fun for others also. So it would, once again, pull everybody into what I'm doing. No, you're pretty cool, as a matter of fact. I would say more, but it's all on tape. <laughs> what would I do with $20,000? What would I do? I would um, really help some people that work with me get 
get their automobile fixed and get some health insurance. Um, I, I don't require much, but younger people do. And I would uh, just want to say thank you um, for giving me so much of your youth and your time and your judgment. And, and it's been good judgment, the people that have given me so much of their life. Yeah. Well, the adrenaline would be pumping so high, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I might be pretty loud. <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of being loud. I'm the best at being loud. <laughs> and I would, I, would love, I would love to get, um, you know, tell Larry Motley on air that we'll get his car fixed. Um, let Brandon know he can get some health insurance and get his knee fixed. You know, things like that would be very, very touching to me. That's awesome. Okay, I would love to, I would love to get one, one um, clean soundbite of that because what you just said now, I don't know if we can edit it all together, but I definitely want to get this in there. Just say that you would be, you'd, you'd be on this show and trying to win, so you just help give back to the people that work for you, that have given youth yeah yeah some they've given me so much of their youth oh if if I win the money is that right if I win the money I would give back to the people that work with me they give me their labor they give me their youth they they are in charge of my money my food I would help them before doing anything with the money. It would go to um, helping my staff upgrade their, their life. Because in this economy, a lot of people have given a lot of free to me, and it would give me a chance to give to them. Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Well, it would, be, it would be great to meet Guy. Um, I, I don't know if, can I just say anything? Just say anything. Okay, I'm going to say anything. And get on to Guy because last time he was in Jacksonville, Florida, my restaurant was scheduled to be on diners, drive-ins, and dives. I'm sure you can't say this on another show, but they called me up at the last minute and said, I'm sorry we ran out of time. I don't even know if they said, I'm sorry. They said, we ran out of time, and it was, you know, almost heartless, and it broke my heart. Oh, I'm sorry. I was sorry. <laughs> I was sorry, too. But, um, you know, you just go forward and say, it wasn't my time then. And maybe it's my time now to be in front of Guy and the judges, and I would look great. I would, I would just look so forward to it that, you know, he's a... He's, he's the king of the, um, of the foodies, and everybody respects him and loves him for that. He puts in a lot. He doesn't just jump on these shows and throw that personality around um, just out of pushing a button. That guy has to work. Guy has to work for what he gets, and it's just like the rest of us, just on different levels. Jesse, you know what I think means? I think means, do you know what I think means? What's 
It means I don't know. <laughs> I'm just. Well, well, all right, how about this? <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to take your opinion. <laughs> I'm going to take your opinion. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Jesse, going back to old school, I have one telephone line. I cannot afford two. I have no computer. I cannot afford the cost of what it's going to go into. I do not have a cell phone because I don't want everybody to get in contact with me all the time. But I do have an answering service, and I do call back my guests when they call for reservations or call to ask for questions. I have a great follow-up internally, but all that other stuff, see, today we tried to get in contact with you through two laptops, and we had technical difficulties. Now, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do, I, I do not have a computer. I do not have a cell phone. I do have the love and knowledge of what food is today, and that's what I put out. I, I stick to the basics and am not confused by the technical world around me. These are absolutely the best collard greens you can use right now. The young and tender ones. Do I get a discount for buying so much? Lovely, celery, cucumber salad. Cut thin. So what are you going to do with this? Lovely southern cucumber salad cut thin with some sweet Florida onions is my best, and we got plenty of carrots, not all in this section, but we need some fresh fruit. Everybody needs some fresh fruit. I'm going to just get them a little watermelon tonight. Let's see, see how much? Let's check that price. <laughs> Let's get that. And we'll give them some fresh grapes to go with that. But what? Hey, my friend. Now, where are these watermelons from? Are they from China? Just joking. Yes. No, are they, where are they from? Not Lake City or something like that? You don't know? This is a is this how, Is this how you uh, check your watermelons? Oh, tap on it, yeah. See, listen, here. It's that almost hollow sound. And another way, it's just to smash it. <laughs> right? Am I right? <laughs> that's, do a karate chop. Do a karate chop, just a, a blast. <laughs> I bet y'all know how it is then, right? Yeah. yeah. You're the checkers. Uh, don't tell anybody. 
I'm trying to keep it a secret. Where's the paparazzi? <laughs> oh, no. It's right there. Sign my grocery bag. When I you always sign your grocery bag. Sign. You want to catch this? <laughs> I enjoyed my uh, experience that you read. Well, thank you. You must have came on a Friday or Saturday night. Yeah, everybody yeah, comes we, in as strangers, and after it's all over with, they're all talking to each other and stuff. Yeah, there's a, we had a big tape of regulars. I was the field regular. You were there? <laughs> <laughs> so it was thank my you. first experience. Well, <laughs> thank you. Come back and see yeah. us, you know? We I can, will. I we will. can fatten you up. <laughs> 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a Guatemala. That reminds me of when I went into a New York I couldn't decide what I want first time I've ever been there. Don't know what all that stuff is. And man, did they cut loose. But we got customers here. Did you end up with a bunch of pasta and red sauce? They, they just had one liners after another. <laughs> about, you come in here and you don't know what you want. We don't have time to wait on you. That's you right. Know, you came here to buy exactly. something, buy something. You get out of the way otherwise. You know, it's just, it just feels fun. Right. Well, you know, well, that's about the way it is around here. I got a heavy, heavy dose of it. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't need to look too hard because this is about what I'm going to do. Is just get some, just get some regular flour. That's how southerner, southerners cook. It's just regular flour. It's not, you know, we'll sift it ourselves and save four or five dollars, making some good biscuits and stuff. But I don't want this flour. I think I always got to wrap it. Wrap it, play it safe. <laughs> okay, so far the produce guy did not know where the watermelon was from. But even this on sale is three dollars more a pound than what I buy it at wholesale. Some. We're just shopping and comparing. Okay, here we go with some good old southern ham with these fresh collard greens. That's what we need to see more of is just good old fresh, fresh, fresh. Good. Good. Let's see where this ham is from. Ooh, Smithfield. No wonder Virginia. But this is great. These are two good things, very good together. That's how mom would cook. Our southern food grows the best football players in the world. That's a great one. <laughs> it is. It's the truth. Uh, where do you think all those gators come from? Not Washington or New York City. No, they're right here in the south. They grew up with good food, good fresh food, right? That's how they grow the best football players ever was. <laughs> and I'm here to tell them. <laughs> Let's see, what else can we get? These are a good price. How do you know a good deal when you see it? Well, the quality and the price is there. That's, that's what you look for. And um, when you can buy a slab of ribs for $7, that's a good deal. I'll get a good return off of that. It's cool. That's what I'll be getting tomorrow. We'll have some ribs, some fresh collard greens, some southern cooking that raises the best football players in the world. I don't see no damn Yankees. I'm sick of the way they cook all the time. Everything's pasta. Everything is, you know... Salami. Uh, we, uh, we have the best food there is in the world right here in the South. This is where the American dinner was originated. Not in the section right here is a section you can get lost in. You know, you can hang out here and never leave the farm. <laughs> wow. We'll be cooking these collard greens probably about three or four hours just to get them right. There are some pretty collard greens. It really is when you pick up your own stuff fresh. You, you got to pick it up. But I'm glad to get it. I'm glad to get it fresh, be able to move it fresh. And 
you got to be able to do more than one thing at one time, you know? Like, get inside the door with your product before you get beat up and robbed. <laughs> well, what I see so much of is just that damn Yankee cooking. And every food show, every teaching show, it's got a Yankee and it's got so much garlic could bring your grandmother back to life. And in North Florida, we like to keep it high quality, more of the natural flavor of the product, not over seasoned. Um, I like to show off that we grow the best football players in the world. That should tell you all you need to know about our food. But when you raise those children up on fresh collard greens, potatoes, local potatoes, local corn. Everybody's got fresh corn. We have all the pork you would want, the beef. The beef came here to start with from Spain. Our seafood is the best. We have it in the river. We have it in the ocean. So everything is from the river, from the ocean, fresh to your table. Um, we have this little menu that I created with um, some history involved and some fun involved. And the history is every one of our dishes that we serve on Friday and Saturday night, the Country Style Seafood Buffet. I uh, also have smoked ribs, but everything's presented in cast iron skillets. But our most popular dish is one that was created out at my mother's fish camp that we had for about 40 years. Uh, the girls usually had very few teeth. Um, green, they called it blonde, but it was green hair. Uh, and the guys loved it, I'm telling you. So, and you could never satisfy those type people. Not that those type people are bad, you just couldn't satisfy them. And so I created a dish in hopes to satisfy them and it's the trailer trash special it's where you have a pulled pork sandwich fresh shrimp fried green tomatoes hand cut potatoes all in one dish so you have a little bit of everything you don't get that up north you get that on the north florida islands of jacksonville that's a good one uh talk to me is that on there no, now you're, now you're... <laughs> yeah and well, we have a, a little beach area I like to do my uh, fat walk on. It's, it's called the Jetties. That's what we always grew up and called it. That's what, that's what it is. But now it's, now it's Huguenot Park. It's got a damn French name. It's as bad as those damn Yankees. You see them everywhere in the wintertime. The, the water's so cold, it'll give you an innie instead of an outie. They're wearing plaid shorts. and almost got their camera connected on going into the ice-cold water of North Florida. Damn it. But a damn Yankee. Do you know what they are? They're the Yankee that never went back. But they try to stick around and learn some good cooking. And, well, I grew up with that kind of damn Yankee around me. I'm half Italian and half cracker. So I grew up frying chicken and making spaghetti. So I got all the cultures going on here. And in North Florida, that's where it all came together anyway. And that's what, that's what I do. Damn it. <laughs>